Welcome to this keynote tutorial for beginners. This is going to be a complete crash course to help you start making your own amazing presentations from scratch. If you're here, you most likely already know what presentations are and what Keynote does. So, my name is Eduard Stinga from Videoplasty and let's get started. Keynote comes pre-installed on all new Mac computers, whether it's an iMac or a MacBook Pro, you should have Keynote down here on the dock on the bottom of your screen. But if for whatever reason you don't have it installed or maybe you have an older version of a Mac, then it's super easy to install by going here to the App Store and uh, just searching for Keynote. It's going to be the first one that you see here. And mine is already installed, so this button right here says Open. But if you don't have it installed, it's going to say Get like it does here on the bottom. So just click the button and it's going to be super easy to install. All right, so once you open Keynote, it's going to look like this, asking you if you want to open an existing project or just start a new document. In our case, we want to start one from scratch, so I'll click this button here where it says New Document. So on this opening screen, Keynote basically asks you if you want to use a, an existing theme and you can also select the aspect ratio. So let's start with the aspect ratio here on the top right. Keynote has two options. One is wide, 16 by 9 or standard 4x3. If you ask me, the one called standard 4x3 should actually be called legacy or obsolete, and the wide one, 16x9, should be the standard one as it's pretty much the one used everywhere. All modern projectors, TV screens, monitors, even laptops, pretty much all of them have a 16x9 aspect ratio and they're wide, so I would definitely make sure to select wide and not standard. So Keynote comes with a lot of different themes, as you can see here, grouped in different categories. You can find more online, either uh, for free or just purchase them from uh, some third-party websites. And the main difference between all those different themes is that they're using different background photos, different fonts, and different colors. So overall, everything else is pretty much the same apart from those three things. But I want you to learn the mechanics of how to build your own presentation from scratch and later on, if you want to use a theme to help you out, that's perfectly fine. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to select this one called Basic Black and uh, hit this button where it says Create. So now we just open our Keynote presentation for the first time. I'm going to walk you through different parts of the interface a little bit later, but for now, I want us to have a look at the main component of any presentation, and that is the slide. You can see a list of all the slides here on the left, but right now we only have slide number one, which is the one you see right here. So to add new slides, it's super simple. You just click on this button here with a plus that says add slide, and Keynote is going to offer you a lot of different options depending on what sort of slide you want to use. The most common ones are obviously a title, which is a simple one with just text. Maybe title and photo if you want to add a bit more detail to your title screen, which is definitely helpful. Classic ones that you've definitely seen a lot are title and bullets, when people just add a lot of bullet points that, to be honest, nobody reads. So if you use bullet points, make sure you make them super short and to the point. Don't write full on paragraphs on the slides because nobody's going to read them. Other useful ones are if you want to use a big fact like this or a sort of statement or maybe even add a quote like this or just add a couple of photos in a very nice way like this. So I'll go ahead and create a few of those slides so you can see how easy it is. Alright, so now we have all those slides created in Keynote, but for now they're pretty much empty because we have to actually add some text or images into them. So to edit any sort of slide, it's actually super simple. If you want to select this element that's outlined here, you just have to click on it once and then you have some controls here on the right, or you can just move it around like this. But if you want to actually edit the text, you have to double click on it and then you can write your own text like this.
So I'll just fast forward and actually add some information on all the other slides as well. For example, if I want to remove any of those elements, whether it's text, the image, or whatever it is in any sort of slide template, you just click on this element like this and just hit the backspace key to remove it. All right, so now I have quite a bit of information on all those slides, and I want to show you the main feature of uh, presentation, which is playing the slides as a slideshow. And to do that, you select the first one here to start from the beginning and click this button right here to enter slideshow mode. And it's going to be full screen like this. And using either the space bar or the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can navigate to the next slides. As you can see, it acts exactly like you would expect any sort of presentation. But for example, let's say you make a mistake in your presentation and you want to go back to a previous slide or a previous photo. You can also navigate backwards, not only forward. And to do that, you can use the left arrow key or up arrow key to navigate backwards to the first slide like this. Next, I want to show you how you can change a few settings for the slide, such as the background, and then how you can edit the settings of the text, such as font, font size, and other different properties. So if you go here on the left and actually select whatever slide you want, let's go with this one because it has a black background. If you have it selected like that, then here on the right, you can, for example, remove the title, you can remove the body like this, or add a slide number here on the bottom. You can also change the background by going here and selecting a different color like this. And for the background, there are different options as well. This one is the most basic one, which is a color fill. But other options are, if you go to this list, you can also do a gradient fill like this. And for example, let's say we go with yellow and orange like this. And you can also change the angle. So it's, let's say, 45 degrees like this, pretty much. That looks pretty, pretty good. Other than the gradient fill, you can also use an image as your background. And to do that, you can either go here and choose an image from your computer. And I'll go to the ones I already have selected for this and just go with this one. Or if you have a folder already opened in Finder, you can just drag and drop it here in this box right here. And it's going to use it as a background. And there are different options of using the image and how to display it. But to be honest, most of the times I suggest you just go with scale to fill because you want to use your image just once and fill the whole slide nicely like this. Otherwise, if you go with original size, it's just going to be weird like this. So personally, I prefer to go with scale to fill. However, whenever you use an image with text on top of it like this in this slide, the text becomes a little bit difficult to read because there's no contrast. In which case, you can go here to background and actually use something called advanced image fill. So what an advanced image fill is, is same as the image fill before, except it adds a color like this, which makes the text pop out a little more and makes it easier to read. So we have the exact same settings here on the right for the image, except now we can also select the color here. So this one works really well and makes everything super easy to read, but we can also see the background here. So if you want to change it, you can go here and select an already existing option. Uh, and the opacity, I think, kind of went up. So maybe if you want more control over that, just click this button right here and uh, use the color selection tool here and also adjust the opacity, for example, to make the photo behind much easier to see. You want to find the perfect balance between being able to see the image behind and also being able to read the text. So I think that's pretty decent and uh, I'll just go with that. If you want to make changes to the text, it's actually super easy. You just have to select whatever text element you want to edit like this. Let's say we want to edit the title. And 
Here where it says styles, you can apply some different styles to it, although I'm not a big fan of those. So I will just hit Command Z on the keyboard to undo this change. But the ones that I actually use and suggest you stick to just this is here on the in the middle where it says text. This is where you can uh, change the font, you can change the weight, the size. I'll just uh, select a different font like Montserrat. I'm a really big fan of that one. You can obviously make it a little bit larger, like let's say 150 points. And if you work with a paragraph or anything like that, you can obviously align it to the left, in the middle, to the right, or justified. Basically, any sort of text controls that you would expect in other text editing software, you have all of them here. And of course, you can also change the color here to something else. All right, that's a little bit ugly, so I'll just go back to white. All right, so as you can see, adding a new slide using one of those templates here is actually incredibly useful. Now, let's say, for example, you want to change the order of the slides, and that's super simple to do. You just drag one of those like this and move it wherever you want like this and it's all super simple as you can see next i want to show you how you can add a blank slide yourself and use all of those custom elements here on the top such as table chart text shape or media and to do that you go here to add slide and we'll just add a blank slide here so obviously the first one that I want to show you is the text one. So to add any sort of text, just click on this button and it's going to add the text here. So as with all the previous elements in Keynote, you can just move it around like this. I can double click on it to enter my own text here. And of course, if I now select the element, I can go here on the right and uh, as before, change the font, make it bold and do whatever I want with it. So adding your own text is actually super, super simple. So the next thing you can add to your slides is going to be media, which is probably the most popular thing you can do in your slides. So you can add photos, an image gallery, videos as well, music, or even record your own audio. Also, if you have an iPhone connected, you can import photos from your iPhone or use it to scan some documents, which is super cool. But in this case, I want to add a photo. So if you just click on photos, it's pretty much going to take you to your photos folder on um, your iCloud. But personally, I don't really use this that much. So whenever I want to add any sort of image or media, I actually have it open in Finder and I just drag and drop it like this into the slide. And now with a photo here, you can manipulate it the same way you did before with a text. You can move it around, grab it here at the bottom to resize it, move it around. As you can see, Keynote tells you when this is vertically aligned on the center and you can also align it horizontally like this, which is super cool if you want to put something in the middle and make sure the whole slide is very well balanced. So here on the right, you can add some different styles to the image like you can with the text, uh, like add some sort of border around it. You can also use some drop shadow as well. But in our case, we have a black background, so it's pretty hard to see the shadow. But just know it's here if you need it. And if I go to this slide right here, I can also adjust quite a few things for the image. For example, if the exposure is not right, you can increase the exposure like this. I mean, obviously now it's pretty overexposed and doesn't look good. You can also change the saturation if you don't like the colors. Or maybe you can just remove the saturation completely like this, minus 100%. If you want to make the image black and white like you see here. And if you want to go a little bit more professional, just know it's here. You can use this button to open up some more advanced controls like this for highlights, shadows, temperature, tint. I mean, this is pretty advanced color correcting stuff. I'll not cover this as uh, it's pretty complex, but if you want to go on an adventure, just know it's here and uh, it's possible to do directly in Keynote. Next, I want to show you how you can add a video to your slide. So to do that, I'll just create a new blank slide like this. Personally, I haven't really seen many people use videos in their slides, but if for whatever reason you want to do it, it's also possible. And the easy way to do that is by going here to movies. But as I said, this is going to open your iCloud folder where you have all your video files from all your Apple devices. Personally, I don't do that, as I said before, with the images. 
I prefer to just go here on Finder, have my video like this here, and then I just drag and drop it into the slide like this. And by default, this is already full screen. The video is 16 by 9, so it fits the slide perfectly like this, full screen. So for example, now if I play back my slide like this and go from this slide to the next and then from this slide to the video slide. So the video is not going to play by default, but to have it play, you just have to press the space bar or forward key or up arrow, whatever you prefer to use to go to the next slide or the next action. Just do that. And as you can see, the video plays back nicely. All right, so I'll add a new slide because now I want to show you some of the remaining elements here. You can also add any sort of table into Keynote, as you can see like this. Double click on any of the cells and write whatever text you want in it. And of course, with a table selected like this, if you go here to the settings, you can change the style. You can add a table name and change a lot of different settings that I'm not going to get into because it's going to get pretty complex, but feel free to explore this as well in case you want to use tables in your slide. What's actually really cool about Keynote, and it's one of the features that I enjoy a lot, is the fact that you can add charts like you can see here. And Keynote has different sort of charts like this in 2D, 3D, or some interactive ones as well. But for this one, let's just go with a simple pie chart, as you can see here. And as before, you can move it around. And if you click here on edit chart data, you're going to be able to add your own data to the chart. And uh, as you can see here, Keynote works with absolute values. So you don't even have to do the math yourself. You can just use whatever actual values you have. And in this case, with percentages, Keynote is going to do all the math behind the scenes and uh, create this beautiful chart for you to use with your own set of data. So once you finish adding your chart data, maybe you don't really like this uh, pie chart, in which case you can go here on the right, obviously have chart selected like this. And for chart type, maybe you want to use a sort of column like this or just explore, I don't even know, like a 3D one like this. The 3D ones are really cool because you can actually grab this thing right here and move it around like this a little to just uh, give it a bit more depth and make it look much nicer. Another thing regarding charts, if you have it selected like this, you can go here under chart options and uh, add a title, which is right now out of the screen. So I'll just have to resize it a bit like this. And you can also add a legend which in this case doesn't really work very well. So let's just change it to the 2D pie chart. Of course, the legend, you can grab it separately like this and uh, move it here, for example. Just move them around until you find something that you're happy with. But for any sort of chart, it's usually super good to obviously have the legend as well so people can understand the data that they're looking at. All right, so next to the chart, I will show you how you can add any sort of shape by using this button right here. And we have a lot of different vector shapes in a lot of different categories. So whatever you need, you most likely can find something super good to use here. So in this case, I don't know, let's assume we want to add a world map like this. And um, I don't know, let's go for Europe and drag and drop it here. And this is in vector format which basically means you can grab it at the corner here to resize it and it's going to stay at perfect sharp quality all the time. So it's not going to lose quality if you make it bigger. And with shapes, you can select the shape like this and go here to style and you can fill it with any sort of color you want. So let's just say I will use this blue because I really like this shade of blue from Keynote. And as you can see, super simple to use. Resize it, move it around. You can add a lot more different shapes as well. For example, I just like this one, looks really cool. So you can use them as an image in your slide, or maybe you just want to add a tiny bit of a small decoration, uh, I don't know, here next to the title. Uh, just, just be creative and use them however you want. Just know that they're here and they're super cool and easy to use. Also, if you remember from before, I showed you how you can add a template like this with different photos. And the difference between this and adding the image like this is that in this case of the template, 
the image is going to fill those shapes perfectly. Even if it's larger than this, it's going to be cropped. So for example, if I double click on this image, as you can see, there's a lot more outside of the area and you can move it around like this to position it or zoom in like this to highlight a specific area. And then when you're done, just click this button and the image is going to stay the same like this in this shape which gives it a bit more balance and makes everything look much nicer. So to change all those images with your own images, it's actually super simple. You can either click this button, but as before, it's going to take you to the photos folder on your iCloud. So I prefer to have them here in Finder and just select whatever photo you want and drag and drop it here inside this area. And I'll do the same for this other two right here. All right, so now, as I showed you before, if I double click on it, maybe I want to show just those decorations and then you can zoom in like this, select this area, click done. Uh, I'll do the same with this because maybe I want to focus on the decorations here on the top of the columns and uh, just move it like this. And as you can see, the shapes stay the same and it looks pretty nice and well balanced. So when it's all said and done and you finish the content for all the slides, if you go here to play, to play the slideshow like this, as you can see going from one slide to another is pretty abrupt. There's absolutely no transition as a sort of smooth animation from one slide to another. So let's see how we can add transitions. To do that is super simple. Let's just select this first slide to add a transition from this slide to the next one. And if you go here on the top right in the middle where it says animate, it's going to be super simple to add a transition effect. So this is where Keynote stands out from uh, PowerPoint or Google Slides because it has some super nice animations that you can't find anywhere else. And of course, there are a lot of different transitions like this. Feel free to explore. Personally, I think some of those are too much. and for my own projects, I prefer to use some super simple ones like uh, this one right here called push. And it's super simple like this, as you can see in the preview. But maybe if you miss the preview, you can also click this button right here to see it again. Personally, I think it's a little bit too fast. So I will adjust the duration of it by using this button right here or just moving the slider to two seconds. And you can also change the direction of the transition or depending on what transition you have. Like for example, this one with push obviously has a direction. Other transitions might have some different settings that you can change here. So now let's preview and see how it looks. It's a little bit slow, but definitely looks much nicer than uh, absolutely no transition at all. So to see which slides have a transition, you can look here on the bottom right of the slide. As you can see here, there's this blue thing right here, which indicates the fact that there's a transition. So you can manually go through all the slides like this and add a sort of push transition like this. As you can see, now we have it on the second slide as well. But maybe that's a bit tedious to do individually for all the slides. In which case, you can select all the slides like this or if you just click on any of the slides and use Command A to select all of them here, then you can add a transition to all of them at the same time. So you go here to animate and change this to push. As you can see, now all of our slides have this uh, blue thing, which indicates we just added the exact same transition to all of them. And now, of course, if I change the duration to one second and a half, of course, this is going to adjust the transition duration for all of the slides together. So if I go to the first slide here and uh, use the play button to play the slideshow, as you can see, it definitely looks much nicer to just have any sort of transition from one slide to the other. All right, so now that we handled the slide transition animation from one slide to another, I want to show you how you can animate each element individually. So the best slide to show you this idea is this with three different photos. Say for example, I don't want to start with all the photos on screen because 
I want to talk about those statues first, then those columns, and then bring this last photo here. So, whenever I select an element like this, I can go here on the top right, obviously in the middle on the animate tab right here, and you can add a build-in animation, an action, and a build-out animation. Personally, I prefer to use mostly just build-in animations. For the build-out, it's just to make the element disappear, and of course you can do that as well, but we already have a transition from one slide to another, so whenever we finish presenting this slide, there's no point to use a build-out animation because we already have a transition to the next slide. So, I'm gonna focus only on the build-in and add an effect like this. And of course, as before, you can preview quite a lot of different uh, crazy ones, as you can see here. There's also one like a comet, which of course doesn't really work whatsoever in the context of those amazing ancient Greek statues. But as before, I prefer to use super simple ones, so I'll just go with fade and scale like this. And of course, you can change the duration, scale, maybe you want to remove this shine thing and uh, have it look like that. So I'll go ahead and add the exact same transition, fade and scale to all of those other photos. And what's going to be super important here is uh, this where it says order. So for the last photo here, I have number three. For this one in the middle is number two. And for this one is number one in order. So now when I play back the slideshow like this, I actually have to hit the spacebar again to have this first photo appear. When I'm done talking about this photo, I can press the spacebar again to bring up the second photo in order. And when I'm done with that one, of course, I can bring the last photo. And if I hit spacebar again, of course, it's gonna take me to the next slide. So if you want to change the order, for example, let's assume you don't wanna start with this one. Uh, you want to start with this one. It's actually super simple. Of course, you select the photo and here where it says order instead of number two, I will just select number one. I'll make this one number two. And of course, this one right here is going to be number three. So now if I play back the slide, as you can imagine, it's going to start with that photo number one. This one is going to be second and the last photo is going to be this one. So I want to show you a few more tricks when uh, you add media to your slides. So I will import this photo here of this giraffe. And uh, as you can see, this background is white and it's going to be pretty easy to remove it. This is not going to work for all different backgrounds with different elements of different colors. This technique to remove the background is only going to work in case your background is of a color like this. So. To remove the background, you just need to have the image selected like I do right now. And here on the top right, go to format and uh, go here in the middle where it says image. And if you click on this button that says instant alpha and you go here, it's going to bring up this tool to select the background color that you want to make transparent. So if you hold down the left click like this, and then just move the mouse like this. You can tell it how much of the background you want it to remove. Of course, if you go too much like this, it's gonna start removing the giraffe as well, because as you can see, this is white, but this part right here on the giraffe is pretty light as well. And it's, uh, let's say, pretty close to white. So it's a fine balance and you want to find the right amount like this until you find something that you're pretty happy with. I think this looks pretty good because we're already starting to lose some of the giraffe. So let's just save this. And uh, when you're happy with this, just click done. And as you can see here, now we have just the giraffe without any background. And it's super easy to just move it around and uh, have our own slight background behind it like this. Because now, for example, I can change the background color to blue. All right. So next, I want to show you that you can also add animated GIF files to your presentations. So let's just add a GIF that we have here of uh, a person giving a presentation, which is uh, pretty meta, to be honest. So uh, yeah, it works like any sort of other image. You can resize it, move it around like this, but it's gonna start animating whenever you click the play button to enter slideshow mode. However, it's going to act like a video. 
So it's static like this until you press the spacebar key or the forward key on your keyboard to start animating like this. But let's assume for example you want it to be there in the background and start animating as soon as the slide begins without you having to click again on it. And to do that you have to select the image like this and if I go here to animate we already have start movie selected here as build in. But I want to go here on the bottom where it says build order and uh, we already have this built in animation. I want it to start not on click, which is you clicking the spacebar, for example. I want this to start after transition. All right, so now if I close this and go back to playing this slide, it's gonna start animating it from the beginning of the slide without you doing anything else. If you're working on a pretty big project that is supposed to be a collaboration between you and other people, you can definitely share the same keynote presentation with other people and allow them to make changes as well. By default, Keynote saves everything in the cloud, so that's super easy to do. And to do that, you go here on this button that says collaborate and you can start inviting other people by using their iCloud or any sort of other email or phone number that you have from them or even using iDrop. And then you can all work on the same file and make changes together to the presentation. So if you're using this to collaborate with other people or just sharing the same local file with people back and forth through email, you can also leave comments to tell people to make changes. To do that, it's super simple. You can select an element like this to leave a comment on this specific element. And to do that, you just go here to this button right here that says comment and you can insert your own comment here. And when you're done, just click this button. And um, now to see the elements that have a comment, you see this yellow bar right here. But don't worry, this is not going to show in um, your slideshow. This is just when you're editing it in Keynote. And of course, you can delete comments, reply to them, and just go back and forth a couple of times. And of course, you can also add the uh, bigger comments like this to say remove slide completely or anything that you want. But uh, keep in mind, it's either a comment on the slide or on a particular element like this. So, of course, when you're done, editing your presentation, you can just go here on file and click save to make sure you have everything saved in your keynote file. However, if you're presenting in a room where you might not have access to an Apple computer, keep in mind that uh, keynote is only compatible with Apple devices. So just to make sure you have a backup in case you have to work with a Windows computer, you need to go here on file and also export your keynote presentation to PowerPoint like this. And of course, it's going to ask you where you want to save it and some sort of advanced options as well. But I would just go with uh, this format right here because this is the new PowerPoint. Like nobody uses this one, it's pretty old now. So click next and of course, it's gonna ask you where you want to save this on your computer. Now, the compatibility between Keynote and uh, exporting it to PowerPoint is around 95%, let's say. So everything is gonna work pretty much the same when you're presenting, except that some animations might not be available in PowerPoint, in which case they will be replaced with something else that looks pretty similar. All right, this has been a pretty long keynote tutorial, but we've definitely covered a lot of ground. I hope you enjoyed it, learned a lot, and now feel confident to make your own presentations. If you watched all the way to the end, please leave a comment below to let me know, and I would really appreciate it if you would gently press the like button, as both of these things really help with the YouTube algorithm so that I can continue to make more videos like this one. For more tutorials like this and other video marketing content, you can subscribe to my channel and explore all my other videos. To keep in touch, make sure to add me on Instagram as well. This was Edward Stinga from Videoplasty and I'll see you in the next video.